Okay, so here's perhaps a more fun example of simple harmonic motion uh, and one that we can also then uh, relate to circular motion. You are a consultant on a movie whose plot involves a tunnel drilled straight through the Earth's center and out the other side. The producer wants to know what would happen if someone fell into this hole. The gravitational acceleration inside the Earth points towards the Earth's center with a magnitude given by this expression g of r is g naught r over r e, where g naught is the gravitational acceleration at the Earth's surface and r e is the Earth's radius. Show that the person would oscillate back and forth through the tunnel in simple harmonic motion and calculate the period of oscillation. So let's make a drawing first. So we have the Earth right here. And so the idea is now we actually dig a tunnel straight through the center of the Earth. And we have a person here that essentially um, will be falling into this um, tunnel right here. Okay, so the radius of the Earth is R e. Okay, that's given. And at any given point, um, we'll denote the position of our person by lowercase r. So that's the distance from the center of the Earth um, that that person is at. Okay, and so now, now it's asking to show that the person would oscillate back and forth through the tunnel in simple harmonic motion. So um, how to do that? Well, so the question is, what is that motion going to be? And so we know what we have to do. We have to essentially um, look at the forces acting on the person. Well, the only force that's acting on the, on the person, and of course, it's going to be a, fu a function of um, R, is essentially the force of gravity. So that's not just mg, that's mg as a function of R, right? So the gravitational acceleration is actually changing with radius. So that force is going to be minus m times g naught r over r e. The minus sign is crucial because essentially um, r is pointing outwards, and so the force um, essentially works against um, in, in against that direction, right? So if if we're on the top side here of the center, the force would point downwards. If we're below the center here, the force actually will be pointing upwards. Okay, and so. Importantly, this tells you that this is a restoring force, right? So the minus sign here means it's a restoring force. Okay. And if you see here, these are constants. So it's a linear restoring force. It's linear in R, okay, because these are all constants. And so you know that essentially this will result in simple harmonic motion. Uh, and we can do that explicitly. We can actually write the equation of motion here. So m times d square r over d t square must equal minus m g naught r over r e. Okay, so conveniently the mass drops out. And so we find that d square r over dt square is minus g naught over r e times r. Okay, and so now we have explicitly written this in the same way as we've done before. We know that this will result in simple harmonic motion, and we actually know a little bit more. We know that this here equals omega square. Okay. That's what we get uh, from simple harmonic motion. So indeed, we will get simple harmonic motion and our um, angular uh, velocity is gonna be g naught over r e and square root thereof. Okay, so that we can now work out. g naught is the um, acceleration due to gravity at the surface. So that's 9.81 meters per second square. The radius of the Earth is 6,371 kilometers squared of this. And if you plug in those numbers, you find 1.24 times 10 to the minus 3 radians per second. Okay, so that's now um, the angular frequency. And so we can, from this, calculate our period of the oscillation is going to be 2 pi over omega and that is 
5063 seconds, which is about 84 minutes. Okay, so what does that mean? It, it means that, that as a person is falling down this tube here, it will take about 84 minutes um, for that person to return back to the position, of course. So this simple harmonic motion, the um, amplitude of that simple harmonic motion is the radius of the Earth. So the person will actually get all the way to the other side here and then go back. And the time for the person to go back is going to be 84 minutes. Okay, so that's actually what was asked, uh, and that could be the end of it. But let's do something something a little bit more fun, actually. So suppose that we add now um, a, a spacecraft to this. And so, I mean, it's, it's a high idealized hypothetical uh, situation. But so suppose that at the time that we drop the person in the tunnel, there's a spacecraft that actually leaves from the same position and that goes around. Okay, so we have some spacecraft... Let's give it some wings, why not? There's a spacecraft that is going to uh, go around that's in orbit around the Earth. And our question is, who's going to get there faster? Okay. And so um, if we are in orbit around the Earth, essentially um, we're in, in circular motion. So let's assume that we're in circular motion actually at the surface. Of, of course, for a spacecraft, that's not realistic, but that makes things um, a little bit easier. And so essentially, um, if, if we're in circular uh, motion, the centripetal force will be the force of gravity. And so we can then write, um, in this case, right, the, that, our, um, that m r omega square must equal the force of gravity, g m m over r square. So that is now our equation of motion for um, that spacecraft. And so from that, you immediately get now what the angular frequency is. So omega is going to be um, gm over r cubed and the square root of that. Okay, now there's something that you should realize, and that is that g naught, <coughs> the acceleration due to gravity at the Earth's surface, is simply gm over r e squared. Okay, and so r in this expression is of course the radius that we are at uh, with our spacecraft. Well, if we set that to r, that's actually going to be the radius of the Earth. So essentially we find that this equals the square root of g naught over r e, right? So we can substitute this for g m over r squared. There's one r left. And since we are at the surface of the Earth, that's going to be Re. And so you see that this is exactly the same expression as the expression we found before. And so you also find that our spacecraft also takes 84 minutes to go around. What a coincidence! You would think naively, perhaps, that since since it's far less to travel through the Earth than to go around it, um, that actually it would be faster to kind of go through this. And it turns out, actually, that's not quite the case. If both the person and the spacecraft leave at the same time, they will actually arrive at the other end at the same time, and they will be back here at the same time, which is after 84 minutes. And that, of course, is not a coincidence. It is the same force of gravity that's making the person fall through the Earth, and it's the same force of gravity that's essentially keeping the spacecraft in orbit um, around uh, the planet as well. And so what you see is, once more, this very clear relation between um, circular motion and simple harmonic motion, and that in uh, an exciting action movie plot, no less.